Hey there. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about glamouries. This was a viewer request. Thanks. But it's also a great one because I think that glamouries are both a lot of fun and very effective. I've had great success with them myself, and they're a form of spell that is widely applicable to all sorts of different scenarios and situations that can have a really great payoff. Now, if you came of age in the 90s, there's a decent chance that your first exposure to the concept of glamouries came from the movie The Craft. There's a scene in that movie where the four girls, the circle, are sitting around in one of their bedrooms practicing glamouries, and one of them changes the color of her eyes and then her hair. Glamouries surface again later in the movie, and at all times in this film, it's represented as making yourself look like what you're not look different from how you typically are seen. This being a Hollywood film, all of this is very literal, of course, but they're not far off the mark in that glamouries are fundamentally illusions. In many modern witchy texts, glamours or glamouries will be associated with the fae, the she, and a lot of the specific acts, items, and correspondences will reflect that. And if that works for you, great. You can go out and find glamoury spells all over the place, but if those particular correspondences and imageries don't work for you, that's not a problem. This is very much one of those spells that you can construct in all sorts of different manners to good effect. There is no single tried-and-true method for pulling this off, so you needn't feel bound by any of the instructions you get from whatever source. Today I'm just going to talk about how I go about it and explain how I think the different components come together in order to build a highly effective glamour. Now, as I just said, glamouries are about illusion, about shaping the way other people see you. But this being the real world, you don't pull that off by magically making yourself blonde or shrinking your ass, which means that glamouries aren't really spells of physical manifestation or illusion, but of controlled projection. They are a means of highlighting facets of personality and, yes, even physicality, so that those facets are the ones that make the greatest impression on others, those you interact with. It's a magical approach to something that we have all engaged in to a certain extent from time to time. When you go to a job interview, you behave a certain way. You're highlighting facets of your personality that are not the same ones that you emphasize when you're having brunch with friends or when you go to a house party. And the way you communicate these different facets are, well, multifaceted. Your posture changes, your speech changes, how you dress has changed. You are consciously controlling different aspects of your appearance and presentation in order to portray yourself in the light you wish to be seen. And the fundamental ingredients for this sort of thing can be broken down into two broad groups. Those aspects that you are manufacturing and projecting, and those aspects that are supplied or enhanced by the perceiver, the person interacting with you or seeing you. And the combination of those two groups of features are going to paint a particular image in the mind of your target audience. Now, the reason I bring up and highlight the perceiver's end of things is that although we have all heard this adage, this recommendation, and even a ton of advice about how to project the image of yourself you'd like others to see, we are not all equally gifted at that sort of thing. Some of us miscalculate. We may think that we're projecting confidence when other people read it as arrogance. We may think we're projecting friendly and other people see it as doormat. And this fundamental disconnect between the projector and the perceiver is something that I think can be addressed during the course of casting a glamoury in order to ensure that the image that you project is in fact the one you want others to see. Instead of starting from your own viewpoint, a self-centered approach of what do I want to show people I instead turn this around and really focus on what I want other people to perceive, what I want them to feel, and I shape my image to fall in line with that desired perception. 
Now, glamouries can be dressed up and executed any number of ways, but the core components when I'm working a glamoury are candles, a mirror or scrying mirror, which incidentally is the topic of the video I posted before this one and where this viewer request was made. So if you'd like to hear more about scrying mirrors and their use, pop over there because I'm not going to recap all of that here. And finally, the third key component is a piece of jewelry. Now this piece of jewelry is going to be where I store the spell, if you will. And in putting that piece of jewelry on, I activate the glamoury. Now, some practical notes when it comes to what sort of jewelry to choose. It can be jewelry that other people see you wear or not. It doesn't have to be immediately visible. You could use a chain that you wear under your shirt. That's not a problem. But I have had best results when I follow a few simple rules. They are one, it shouldn't be something that you already have very strong emotional associations with unless those emotional associations are very much in line with the image you are attempting to project. Which is to say that an heirloom piece from your doting grandmother isn't necessarily the right choice for a glamoury that you would whip out when you go to house parties in order to ensure that you're able to make friends easily and charm the pants off of everyone there. Two, it can be something you wear every day. However, I have found that glamouries fade with time. This isn't a one-shot trick. And so if you're hoping to create a glamoury for a particular event, I recommend casting a glamoury as close to the event as possible and not wearing the item until that event. Once that event is over, you can of course feel free to wear that item of jewellery every day and have the effect slowly fade with time, at which point you can absolutely sort of recharge that piece of jewellery with the glamoury again. Now, I've never tried loading up a piece of jewelry with a completely different glamoury. I wouldn't recommend it. It could work, but I suspect it would be less effective than starting fresh. Because in some sense, what you're effectively doing with this piece of jewelry is you're creating a talisman out of it. The jewelry is home to associations that you wrap into it. And once you've formed those associations, even though they may weaken with time, it seems likely to me that enough of them stick around to muddy the waters if you try and do something completely different with that same piece of jewelry after the fact. Finally, I've heard people suggest that particular forms of jewelry or jewelry made out of particular materials or metals are preferable to others. Silver comes up a lot because, again, the she. But, you know, I've got to say in my experience, something that looks right is what's important. So if you're not a person who wears silver, you prefer gold, don't feel the need to introduce a piece of silver just for the sake of falling in line with the vaguely historical. Now the process of casting the glamoury itself isn't complicated, but also shouldn't be rushed. My setup involves placing my mirror in front of me so that it captures my reflection and then lighting and placing a couple of candles behind myself so that they do cast some light, but I cannot actually see the candles themselves in the scrying mirror. You do not want a great deal of light. You want just enough for a vague outline and for your reflection, your face, to either be a complete flat field that is completely impossible to see or only slightly visible because over the course of the spell, you're going to be consciously manipulating your reflection until it meets the specifications of what you're trying to achieve. As far as the piece of jewelry is concerned, you can leave that lying on the floor, on the table, or on the altar, whatever, in front of you until you've hit the imagery, the tone that you're after. And that may be the better approach if it's your first time. Alternately, you can just hold it the entire time provided you're pretty sure you're going to end up in the right place. Some people do get a little freaked out when the image of their face in the mirror starts to shift and change, and if that's the case, it may be better not to be holding the piece of jewelry that you're trying to store the glamour in, but that's a detail you can sort out for yourself. Now, here is what I think are the two key points when it comes to how I shape my reflection. 
The first is I'm doing it from the point of view of the perceiver. I am detaching myself from my reflection and shaping what I, as the perceiver, would want to see that would confirm my view of the person I'm looking at being fill in the blank, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Competent, charismatic, intelligent, witty, whatever constellation of traits, and they should be a constellation, not just a single trait, but several ingredients that go into building a whole person that is perceived as what it is I'm looking for. Bearing in mind that I am generally particularly focused on one or two key traits. As for the second crucial aspect of this process, the reflection I'm shaping is not a static one. I am shifting that reflection through the gamut of facial expressions, and responses that, as the perceiver interacting with me, I would be likely to encounter over the course of interaction, which is to say, I'll shape my reflection and watch that reflection laugh at a joke in a way that is in line with the constellation I'm building. That reflection introduce themselves in a way that is consistent with the constellation I'm building ask questions in a way that is consistent with the constellation I'm building. I am shaping that reflection and walking that reflection through all the minutiae of the social interactions I expect to face. And as I go, I am watching and correcting any aspects of that reflection that fall outside of what it is I'm trying to achieve. And I will cycle through this process flitting from one scenario to the next, and then coming back again and again to that one central image that really captures the heart of what it is I'm trying to get, hitting that version of me again and again and again, and loading all of these into the piece of jewelry that I'm going to store them in. Now, it's important to keep in mind that you're doing all of this by working with a visual representation of a non-material thing, right? I'm not giving myself a smaller nose. I'm creating a whole personality, a whole character, if you will. And even if my goal is to diminish some aspect of my appearance that I don't like, if you want to do something like that, even then your focus would be on projecting that personality that you're looking for because that personality is going to shape how people perceive your physical appearance. We don't need to break physics in order to change our appearance. There is a great deal of wiggle room simply by working with projection and perception. Now during this process, you can repeat a mantra or the small handful of traits that you're really focused on or words that will help reinforce that what you are seeing, what you are shaping in your mirror will be what other people see when you wear this piece of jewelry. And if that's the case, I'd stick to two, no more than four lines that you have memorized, that you know ahead of time, that you can repeat over and over and over again while you do this. And then when you're done, when you're ready, load it up into that piece of jewelry, however you would go about doing such a thing. And That's it. That's the whole thing. You've created a clamory. Now when the event occurs, the time comes for you to don that piece of jewelry. It's as simple as putting it on and becoming that reflection that you had shaped. You can make a little ceremony out of the act of putting on the jewelry. You can simply repeat the traits or, again, that mantra or that spell verse that you used while creating it, and then simply forget about it and go out and meet the world. For me, glamouries are one of the most dependable acts of spellcraft that I engage in, and I have enjoyed some spectacular fortune as a result of its effect. So for those of you interested who haven't tried this sort of thing, I definitely encourage you to. It's the sort of work that is ideal for important events or just trivial shit. And if you do try it, I hope some of what I've included in this video will be helpful to you. But regardless, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.